Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part seven of my 3D printed R2D2 style droid, which is actually going to be an R6 droid. So last time I left the end of the video in a very similar situation, apart from I'm sitting on this box now, um, where I had the feet done and I'd driven the feet around on a smooth floor with them bolted together with some bits of wood and stuff. And as you can see now, the droid is in fact standing on its own two feet and it's not too unstable. So let's have a look and see what I've done in the meantime. So I've attached my feet, which are on eight mil bits of studding, which come through this hole, but they also have a bearing set inside. So to keep the legs parallel, I've got these two metal rods now with some adjusters, which are 3D printed. So basically what we've got is some bearings on the six mil bits of studding that I put in, which um, stay stationary. And those run all the way through to the inside as well. And those are eventually gonna take the PWM signal for the motor controllers. So they run all the way down the leg. They've got adjusters with bolts on and they run all the way down into the foot and they link to these joints to strips of metal which are embedded in the foot and are bent over and screwed on the bottom. Um, as I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, I made the legs too thin. So typically they would have been able to come out of the back here, um, but they can't because the leg is too thin, which is why they're squeezed into that 10 mil gap but that does actually hold it parallel and it can stand up in two leg mode. So I can actually drive this around now, although it's a little bit wobbly, but not too bad. So let's see how that looks. So I've cleared a bit of a space in the lounge to give this a little bit of a drive. Hopefully I've got a bit more of a hang of it since last time. I've basically bodged all the connectors up with all of the radio gear in the feet there. So if I give the transmitter a tweak, you'll probably see those lights flashing. And there we go, so not too bad. Driving in two leg mode is generally considered quite dangerous because obviously it's quite top heavy. Um, and due to the bend in my metal studding, it is actually quite wobbly and I'm gonna try and do a fix for that later. At the moment, I've got a wedge to stop it falling over backwards as it accelerates away. But at the moment, obviously the legs do need to hinge forwards as the uh, leg moves backwards. So there's uh, obviously that bit of wobble at the ankle, which is actually my bits of parallel studding bending. So. Um, what we really need, of course, is the third foot, and we've put this carriage in so it can retract and turn into two-leg mode and convert that to three-leg mode. So today we're going to try and get that centre foot on, and then we can really drive at full speed, which is a lot faster than I showed you earlier. Here is my um, initial drawing of the centre foot mechanism and the centre foot. So the red plates on the bottom here where the casters screw on and um, effectively it's a fairly a fairly standard centre foot and leg. Now I've made the joint quite a lot wider, about twice as wide as it should be. Normally the centre foot is um, has a, a joint or a leg piece in the middle that's about an inch wide and one of the main breakdowns of R2s is the centre foot hinge breaking and that's because as the droid turns of course you get a lot of sideways force on that hinge um, <clears throat> when it's driving in three leg mode because the front leg is sticking out of the front. So I've deliberately deviated from the design and made this um, whole joint quite a bit wider. And as with the other parts, we've got space for a bearing to be put in each side. So you can see there's quite a big hole in there. So there's space for a bearing and a nut and a piece of eight mil studding on the end of um, on the end of the joint. So essentially, a piece of eight mil studding is bolted through that centre leg and it's resting on bearings at each side in the foot. So again, the, the foot is going to be a frame. So the cast has gone the bottom and of course it's tapered outwards at the sides and outwards at the front and back. So unfortunately my casters are a little bit too big to fit inside the triangle. So they stick out a bit, so I might have to replace those sometime. Uh, but for now I don't really care. I'm gonna, again, as I did with the outside feet, just make this wedge shape and in the future um, 3D print the rest of the frame to make it taper out all the way around. 
Um, and the caster spacing there means the casters can both rotate to the middle and the outside and it still fit in with the size of the centre foot. So the um, I've got the carriage here um, just placed here, which is of course where it's going to attach to and I need to get that height exactly right. So I haven't designed the coupling yet and I'm going to print the foot that holds the casters and then print the leg. Um, and at that point I'll be able to measure exactly how long it needs to be to get to the carriage and what the bracket looks like that mounts it so that when that carriage is fully extended the centre foot touches the ground at the same height as the other feet. And the one last thing you'll notice is I've left a hole right through the middle here. So let's just try and do a fly through for there. So there's this, uh, this hole right through the middle and that is to allow the piece of studding to go all the way through because the studding that retracts this centre foot is of course fixed. So when this is retracted that studding will um, essentially pierce through the centre there so um, the, the hole there is to allow it to do so and it should fit neatly between the casters. So um, fairly well planned, I'm going to print those centre foot parts off and we'll see how long to make the leg. Here are some of the parts that I've printed. This one holds the casters and this is one of the sides. I've got one, the other one here and I'm just waiting for the fourth one to print so I can weld those two 5mm sections back to back to make the two sides. I've got the thing here that holds the actual hinge with bolts that run all the way through. So I just need to get those parts assembled. Then we can put the casters on and we can measure the actual distance from the ground and we can work out where the leg attaches to the carriage. Here is um, the main part of the centre foot with the casters on. Obviously these casters can't touch in the middle. So although they should trail in the same direction, something weird could happen. So I've made sure that there's a gap there so they don't bind on each other. And obviously this centre foot should be much bigger. Um, it will slope down more and out at the sides, which will be frame pieces probably attached to each side. But for now we can drive on it uh, when we've made the centre leg. So um, what I can do now is measure the height of it measure the height of the carriage when it's down on the droid then I can work out how big to make that centre foot. I've measured quite carefully the height of where the carriage is from the ground when it's down and also the height of the foot in real life now I've got the casters on and I've been able to size my centre leg based on that. Now I cunningly left some screw holes in the carriage there at the bottom on each side so I've managed to make my leg the right length and make these brackets which screw into the leg and screw into the bracket. And these will all be acetone welded as well, but they fit quite neatly in those screw holes. Uh, similarly, these sections of leg um, in the middle also have screw holes that hold them all together. So it should be fairly robust. So hopefully all my measurements are correct and that should fit exactly to touch the ground when the carriage is extended fully down and you can see the hole is still there all the way through the middle of course for the studding to pass through when the foot is retracted so we better get printing there's a few parts there to print which is roughly a whole bed print about four times to get all the parts together Here's a bunch of parts, it's most of them, I'm still waiting for another one of each of these to be printed for the other side of the foot, but I can start getting these pieces screwed together to make up the centre profile. Here's the centre foot assembly all put together, um, it seems extremely rigid, I've got a piece of 8mm studding bolted to the foot and there's bearings recessed into each side there which makes that an extremely smooth movement, which is quite important because it means that when um, the foot retracts this whole thing stays central it might wobble as it drives around but it does mean it won't get caught as it comes down or stuck at an angle so it will come down completely straight 
Um, I might put some foam buffers in each side to, to stop it swinging around when it's retracted and the droid's driving, but it's not actually going to do too much of that. Um, so it seems pretty solid. I've got that hole for the studding all the way through, as you can see just there. So let's get that mounted. All right, so my droid's upside down. I've got these tabs here which I put in, which fit in here. And hopefully, oh yeah, that's quite a good fit. So that looks pretty good. That studding looks pretty well aligned and the screw holes are in the right place. So I should be able to just acetone weld and screw that in place. And hopefully these feet all come at the same height as well. There's a little bit of play in that carriage up and down. So hopefully we should be able to now drive in three leg mode and hopefully that will retract all the way. That leg does retract perfectly into the middle there and it's the wheels are completely inside. Um, so let's just give that a go. Let me just uh, send that down. And there it is. So now it's got three legs. Um, I want to try the conversion, but I'll do that on a smooth floor. Um, the only slight problem I can see is that um, when, this, when this comes up, if the casters aren't in both the same position, so if one of my casters is hanging like this, which it will be, because it will have driven in one way or the other, um, then that foot hangs slightly off centre, uh, which means that the studding will hit the side of the hole. So I probably need a little spring in there on each side just to hold that centrally. Um, but if it's balanced well, then everything works fine. All right, so let's give that a go. I've just got um, an arrangement of batteries and things. So that's pretty much it in the three leg mode and it should come back again as well. Those belts are still skipping a bit and both of these are being run off one battery. Um, eventually they'll run independently with independent end stops and I'm planning on putting thicker belts on those motors. Um, but for now that works perfectly well. Alright, it's time to do some driving. So I'm pretty happy that it drives around and it's fairly solid. There's a couple of little improvements I need to make. One of those is putting an end stop underneath the feet here um, when they're uh, at this angle so that they can't bend this way anymore. Um, and that's to keep some pressure on the actual drive wheel so that's forced against the ground. Um, at the moment there's a bit of play in that due to the parallel rods bending in the leg. Um, so I do get a bit of wheel spin, although the Ninja Flex is quite smooth and it means it can drift a bit as you may have seen in the video. Um, the, the floors in my house are quite smooth, so hopefully on a different floor it'll be fine anyway. But we just need to make that little improvement just to apply pressure. Um, and the other thing about the centre foot is a very similar thing. I'll have an end stop when that centre foot is straight with the spring holding it towards the end stop um, to hold that in the middle when it retracts and extends. And obviously with the weight of the droid on, the spring will stretch and it'll stay in the correct place. Um, but overall, feeling pretty happy with how it is. It's a couple of days later, I've made a couple of improvements to this. So first of all, I've put those blocks in I mentioned, which are a hybrid print of Ninja Flex and ABS. And I've acetone welded those in, so when this foot comes down or when this leg um, hinges forwards, it rests on the rubber, which works quite nicely to apply pressure on the drive wheel so I don't get any wheel spin anymore. The other thing I've done here is to the center foot. So you can see an elastic band here 
what I've actually done is installed end stops, which are these things with screws in. So this thing springs to the middle, which means as it extends and retracts, the studding passes um, directly through the hole without any issues. And I've also upgraded the belts. So I've put in thicker belts here, which are Syncroflex AT series, which are actually meant to convey force rather than timing belts. So those are a lot tighter and they have a, do a better job of converting. So let's look at that conversion again. seems to be running pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the mechanical assembly so far. Obviously it does go pretty quick. In fact, I can't get up to speed without crashing as you saw in the last clip there. And I'm still running this on a pair of um, two amp hour, 11.1 volt LiPos, which I've got, which are still the second hand ones, which I haven't charged still. Um, they still seem to be holding their voltage okay. So um, there's only one of those in each foot. And in the clip I had one sellotape to the top there to operate the other motors. So I think that's a pretty good way forward. You can get these up to five amp hour. Um, I think it draws about four amps when it's really accelerating. The stall current of those motors is only seven amps and the conversion draws about half an amp for those two tiny motors to winch the legs back and forth. So I'll probably have one battery in the body for the head spinning and the conversion and one of these or possibly some of these in parallel in the feet for long-term driving. So um, they're obviously really lightweight. Um, so in terms of total weight, this thing's not too bad. I can kind of pick this up. You know, it's not desperately heavy. Um, I think my budget for 10 kilograms of plastic is okay. Obviously, it's got lots of metal in it and motors, which makes it weigh a bit more than that, but probably it's going to come out at about 15 kilograms in total. So that's all I'm going to do in this video. Next time, I'm going to work on the head. Then after that, we can do all the fun stuff with the detail parts, utility arms, and all of the um, vents and so on on there and then we can do some electronics. Mm -hmm.